Well, <clears throat> I've got this compact in front of me right now. And I'm going to open it up with you. I'm going to open it up with you. And over the course of the next hour, I'm going to commit to going with the flow with this word, this word that I got right here. So, I'm going to record it for you, so that at this time, you are able to have some sort of revelation for yourself. Now, I am not coming at you from a Christian perspective. Coming at you now from a now perspective. And I'm using quote unquote God's word as a tool to learn something myself about my deepest self and I already know that I enjoy doing it with one or more where two or more are gathered together I am in their midst where two or more are gathered together I am in their midst. So in some way, shape, or form, He is in our midst now. So it looks like we're two minutes and thirty or so seconds into this, which gives us a little bit over 50 minutes of word. A word. I'm going to just read. I'm going to read. I'm going to read what I see. I'm going to put it up. Black and gray. Black and gray is what it say. Black and gray is what it say. Words of Christ in red. Something else that it says. It's interesting how the human face is so much more appealing than the cover of a book. You can read a person's face like a book. You can read a person's face like a book. I heard once in the good book that as a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. Now you don't have to be a Christian to hear that. Hear this. As a man thinketh, so is he. As a man thinketh, so is he. <clears throat> Jeremiah thirty one twenty two. This is what the Lord says. A voice is heard in Ramah, mourning and great weeping. 
Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. This is what the Lord says. Restrain your voice from weeping and your eyes from tears, for your work will be rewarded, declares the Lord. They will return from the land of the enemy. So there is hope for your descendants, declares the Lord. Your children will return to their own land. I have surely heard Ephraim's moaning. You disciplined me like an unruly calf, and I have been disciplined. Restore me, and I will return, because you are the Lord my God. After I strayed, I repented. After I came to understand, I beat my breast. I was ashamed and humiliated because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is not Ephraim my dear son, the child in whom I delight? Though I often speak against him, I still remember him. Therefore my heart yearns for him. I have great compassion, compassion, for him, declares the Lord. Set up road signs, put up guideposts. Take note of the highway, the road that you take. Return, virgin Israel, return to your towns. How long will you wander, unfaithful daughter of Israel? The Lord will create a new thing on earth. The woman will return to the man. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and in its towns will once again use these words. The Lord bless you, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. At this I awoke and looked around. My sleep had been pleasant to me. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judah with the offspring of people and of animals. Just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down and to overthrow, destroy and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant. Matthew 27:13 Then Pilate asked him Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you <clears throat> Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you Don't you hear the testimony that they are bringing against you. Don't you hear the testimony that they are bringing against you? Now, above what I just read is an emboldened chapter title that says Judas hangs himself but Jesus made no reply not even to a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. Now, it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you? Which one do you want me to release to you? 
which one do you want me to release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. That's what she says. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, His blood is on us and our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Next it says the soldiers mock Jesus. I see a lemon hanging on a tree. How is that any different than seeing a word in a book? I see a lemon growing on a green tree. How is that any different than seeing a sentence in an open book? Let me go there for you. In other words, a sight is a sight. If I see it, it's in my sight. If I see it, it's in my sight. Big or small, up or down, left or right, black or white, red or orange. I see it, it's in my sight. I've been taught to read. In other words, I know how to read. Yet how many of us have been taught when to read, silently or out loud? At what time is it best to speak? And at what time is it best to be silent? And how can you know for sure? How can you know for sure when is the best time to authentically create? What sticks out to me the most about what I have read thus far 
is that Jesus was charged falsely yet he stayed silent inwardly inwardly knowing inwardly knowing and abiding in truth already justified If I post this onto the YouTube, I will title it Already Justified. Already Justified. Already Justified. To be like Christ, to be like this man this book in this world now is to be already justified is to be already justified an accusation can come at you from all angles from people in authority from the lowliest people in the world and yet Christ Jesus can be silent in those times knowing already justified it's not about making someone else think you're good think you're righteous think you're justified it's about knowing it already now within can you know this in the face of adversity can you know this in the face of accusation You can. You can. Before I close the book right now, I peeped Jesus has risen. 
Jesus has risen. To rise up simply means to stand up, to elevate, to get higher, to evaporate, to resurrect. spiritually inwardly manifesting a new experience of the day you know that's good that's a good word that's a good word it's already justified already justified second Thessalonians thanksgiving and prayer the man of lawlessness stand firm request for prayer warning against idleness final greetings now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way in every way at all times may he do that this time at this time at this time may he give you peace is it okay would you accept that would you allow that now I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Be with you all. He is speaking to a lot of people. He is speaking to a lot of people. Now, I'm not talking about anything about this book right now. I'm just saying, he is speaking to a lot of people right now. He is resounding, resounding to a lot of people right now. In 
the forms of many different languages across the board from Vietnamese to English and everything outside of that and in between a lot of people are hearing his word and yet is there a deeper way to hear word for to be deaf in this world should it mean that you can't hear God's voice and God being powerful enough and mighty can make you hear even if you can't the nature of God is that he can do the impossible the nature of God is that he can do the impossible One of the attributes of God is that He can do the impossible in your life. The attributes of God is that He can do the impossible in anyone's life. May God great physician perform a healing miracle in your life now may God the great physician perform a mighty miracle in you now You ask him that same question, you receive that same question. I'm guiding you through the process. I truly am. I'm guiding you through the process of your state of being that question your state of being being that acceptance grace between you between you and I think you know who between you and you know who between you know who and you what's in between there
what's in between me and you. Space. Distance. Seemingly separation. I feel like to tell you that this morning I had a cup of coffee. Hot. With Dunkin' Donuts creamer in it. And I found the opportunity to drink my second cup. Instead, I threw in a body workout CD called cardio recovery it's actually still in the CD side here take it out pop it back into its case I just just want to tell you that because that's uh, the type of morning I've had have found that I found that you know, energy itself is a great thing to have. Now what that really is is up for grabs. You know, how do you really get energy? Does it come from the outside in? From the inside out? Of course it comes from fill in the blank. Or you feel it because of fill in the blank. One thing's for sure that right now you have a feeling. You have a experience of energy. And you can choose to dwell on the contemplation of measuring out. What you're feeling like now compared to what you have felt like in certain segments of your past. What you know to be possible. But what I'm really doing here is I'm not necessarily putting us into the future because we're always here now, but I'm saying what's actually possible. Is it possible to feel a love from God that's so blissfully, benevolently positive, energetic, that there's no way to compare it to anything you've ever experienced thus far in your life?
I have an inkling there is. Because you know that there's certain ways of being that you can be now that raise you up. So you already know it's possible to make yourself feel different. You already know that. That you can change yourself. You can change your experience, your inward experience of energy. You have at least a modicum of control over that. Maybe not in full control over energy you feel. You have some control over that. So let's receive knowledge. What do you say? Let's re receive some real knowledge on how we can actually experience bliss. See, like right now, I feel a certain way in my tummy, you know? Like I'm really having an experience you know, of having an empty stomach. It's real subtle. It's real subtle. And I can change that by eating. In the same manner, in the same way, can you change yourself? Can you change the feeling state of your being? Can, can we somehow raise it up to an unprecedented level of bliss through a scientific method of being? Let's go to the source. Let's go to one who is actually feeling that way now. Let's go to the one It actually is feeling nirvana, bliss, spiritual euphoria. Now, let's go to him or her or it and ask for it to impart bliss unto us. Asking it to impart a mechanism unto us to feel that. To allow that to extend up and up. Or inside out. Whatever way it actually works, just... Let's allow it to happen. Italian duo tone ISBN 9780310435495 and it looks like the marker is right here so let's open it up okay and it's highlighted someone highlighted it for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart I will be found by you declares the Lord and will bring you back from captivity I will gather you from all the nations and places where I've banished you declares the Lord and will bring you back to the place from which I carry you into exile for I know the plans I have for you 
plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and the future. Hola, amigo! Is Jim here today? Not now. Excuse me? Not now. He's out of here. Did he move? No, he's, uh, he's traveling. He's over the East Coast right now. Oh, really? Yeah. tell you what just happened in my life right now I'm in a room and a dude came by several weeks ago to spray down some of the bugs and this process it seemed had been going on for a while in his life and in this room yet you know, when it came came down to the nitty gritty, he came by, and basically I, you know, stopped it from occurring. I said, uh, "No, let's not continue doing this." You know, um, what is this chemical being sprayed in the presence of the people in this this abode? That sort of thing. It's like, hey. It's killing the ants, so what's it do to a human being over the long term? Sort of issue. It's like, is it truly necessary to put that mist in our mist? And the answer seems to be no. No, but I still care for the guy. I still care for him at a, at a fundamental level. And I'm working in my own life to to be able to reject what someone's trying to do but still love them you know what I'm saying to because I didn't even get out of my seat this time and he sped off on what sounded like two tires you know the rubber hit the road pretty quick pretty swift and he said some words because he's making money that way but he's making money in a way that's bringing toxicity out of a can and into the room so there's a lot of different ways that I could go with this but I'm just gonna be how it is I'm gonna leave it as it is for now and I'm telling you this because this is one of the situations that, that we can find ourselves in in this world. People have different ways. They make money in different ways. And as soon as you go out into the public, now you're part of the collective. And some of the ways that are ideal are not practiced in this world. And sometimes you are be put in a position to allow the ideal to manifest instead of the, the falsity. And those times, let's, let's ask for revelation in the moment and remember that it's okay sometimes to be silent. It's okay not to give an answer. It's okay as we take from the example of the story of, of Jesus when he was accused of doing wrong and he was being 
questioned. He, he didn't feel a need to justify himself. He just knew something inside and he was holding on to that truth. So what I'm getting at is that if you know something, then inwardly know it. And don't always feel the need to press that out to someone else. Because if there's truly something for you to keep focused on, and that's benefiting you eternally, then it wouldn't make much sense to turn your focus elsewhere by answering a question in a certain way that will appease someone's need to know. So the, the way of looking at it from the bigger pictures, uh, possibly that maybe their need to know isn't required. You know, the breathing can be considered required, but is needing to know, like breathing? Well, I said an hour. We're coming up to 46, 47 minutes. You know, it's just the nature of myself and kind of how I am is to where I reflect back to events of my recent past and wonder what I could have done differently. And sometimes in the moment, things happen so quickly that uh, 
you see a given set of choices. Like for instance, when that man came by, I knew that I could have stopped being in the zone here with with these words, with this word, and interact with him, which is a whole other level. Because when I'm just here alone speaking to the camera, I can, you know, kind of stay in a peaceful mode a lot easier than in the the um, context of interacting with a being who who isn't thinking like this you know, they're coming in with a certain agenda a certain intention to do a job that they don't necessarily even feel is wrong and doing it because actually they just really want to make some cash so to you know you know if I would have uh, one of the things I, I wonder is since he showed up right as I started reading this highlighted word from Jeremiah 29 11 you start thinking well was that for him and he came here with a certain agenda he came here with with something in his heart and at the same time that he shows up I'm reading this highlighted part For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and place and places where I have banished you and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart I will be found by you then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you for I know the plans I have for you declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future I gotta read that again baby that's good for I know the plans I have for you plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope in a future then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart I will be found by you and will bring you back from captivity I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you and bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile The Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon. For this is what the Lord says about the king who sits on David's throne and all the people who remain in this city, your fellow citizens who did not go with you into exile. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Quote, I will send the sword, famine, and plague against them, and I will make them like figs that are so bad they cannot be eaten. I will pursue them with the sword, famine, and plague, and will make them abhorrent to all the kingdoms of the earth, a curse and an object of horror, of scorn and reproach among all the nations where I drive them, for they have not listened to my words, declares the Lord, words that I sent to them again and again by my servants the prophets, 
and you exiles have not listened either declares the Lord therefore hear the word of the Lord all you exiles whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon this is what the Lord Almighty the God of Israel says about Ahab son of Koliah and Zedekiah son of Messiah who are prophesying lies to you in my name so this is what the Lord Almighty the God of Israel says about Ahab son of Koliah and Zedekiah son of Maseah who are prophesying lies to you in my name I will deliver them into the hands of Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon and he will put them to death before your very eyes because of them all the exiles from Judah who are in Babylon will use this curse may the Lord treat you like Zedekiah and Ahab whom the king of Babylon burned in the fire for they have done outrageous things in Israel they have committed adultery with their neighbors wives and in my name they have uttered lies which I did not authorize I know it and am a witness to it declares the Lord message to Shemaiah tell Shemaiah the Nehelamite this is what the Lord Almighty the God of Israel says you sent letters in your own name to all the people in Jerusalem to the priest and to all other priests you said to Zephaniah the Lord is appointing you priest in a place of Jehoiada to be in charge of the house of the Lord you should put any maniac who acts like a prophet into the stocks and neck irons. So why have you not reprimanded Jeremiah from Anathoth, who poses as a prophet among you? He has sent this message to us in Babylon. It will be a long time. Therefore build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. There's more that you can continue on with that in Jeremiah 29 all the way up through 30 where it says there's something called the restoration of Israel. And I got about two minutes so I will read uh, chapter 30 starting at verse 5. <clears throat> this is what the Lord says. Cries of fear are heard, terror, not peace. Ask and see, can a man bear children? Then why do I see every strong man with his hands on his stomach like a woman in labor? Every face turned deathly pale. How awful that day will be. No other will be like it. It will be a time of trouble for Jacob, but he will be saved out of it. In that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will break the yoke off their necks and will tear off their bonds. No longer will foreigners enslave them. Instead, they will serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. So do not be afraid, Jacob my servant. Do not be dismayed, Israel, declares the Lord. I will surely save you out of a distant place, your descendants from the land of their exile. Jacob will again have peace. And security. And no one will make him afraid. I am with you and will save you, declares the Lord. Though I completely destroy all nations among which I scatter you, I will not completely destroy you. I will discipline you, but only in due measure. I will not let you go entirely unpunished. This is what the Lord says. Your wound is incurable, your injury beyond healing. There is no one to plead your cause, no remedy for your sore, no healing for you. All your allies have forgotten you. They care nothing for you. I have struck you as an enemy would and punished you as would the cruel, because your guilt is so great and your sins so many. Why do you cry out over your wound, your pain that has no cure? Because of your great guilt and many sins, I have done these things to you. But all who devour you will be devoured. All your enemies will go into exile. Those who plunder you will be plundered. 
or who makes spoil of you, I will despoil. But I will restore to you, I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord, because you are called an outcast, Zion, for whom no one cares. This is what the Lord says: I will restore the fortunes of Jacob's tents and have compassion on his dwellings. The city will be rebuilt on her ruins, and the palace will stand in its proper place. From them will come songs of thanksgiving and the sound of rejoicing. I will add to their numbers, and they will not be decreased. I will bring them honor, and they will not be disdained. Their children will be as in days of old, and their community will be established before me. I will punish all who oppress them. Their leader will be one of their own. Their ruler will arise from among them. I will bring him near and he will come close to me. For who is he who will devote himself to be close to me, declares the Lord. So you will be my people and I will be your God. See the storm of the Lord will burst out in wrath, a driving wind swirling down on the wicked, on the heads of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he fully accomplishes the purpose of his heart. In days to come, you will understand this.